the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Tonight on DC News Now at 7, we are learning disturbing new details about the motivation for last night's U-Haul crash into a barrier next to the White House. We speak with witnesses who tell us they still can't believe it. I think it's like really crazy and really scary how something like that could happen now. And tonight we're helping you get to the bottom of the bizarre crash in Lafayette Park. Plus, 20-year-old Damian Myers went to a diner with some friends in Prince George's County. More than a month later, he still hasn't come home. Tonight, we are talking to his family who are trying not to lose hope. And we are quickly coming up on Memorial Day weekend. With some great holiday deals already out there. We are helping you stretch your dollar on those deals, plus tips for a busy weekend of travel. And what to expect weather-wise for your holiday weekend. Hey, I have all the details. It looks like we're going to contend with a few spot showers, not a complete washout. I'll have the full breakdown coming up. Well, good evening. Thanks for joining us for DC News Now at 7 o'clock. I'm Chris Flanagan. And I'm Thasmeen Muffies. And new details tonight about the teenager who crashed a U-Haul truck into a security barrier at Lafayette Square last night. Yeah, according to charging documents, he was trying to reach President Biden. The crash happened around 940 last night. This is a U-Haul truck there. It tried twice to ram past security into Lafayette Park. Yeah, so that's on the north side of the White House, right near 16th Street. We've also learned tonight that President Biden was inside the White House when it happened. Yeah, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre would not comment on security measures taken during the investigation. We told reporters this afternoon the president was briefed this morning. Meanwhile, at the scene of that crash, intense moments for witnesses. Yeah, our Dave Laval reports on the reaction after last night's incident. Most people we talk to aren't even aware of what happened here Monday night as they make their way through the park to get up close to the fence that surrounds the White House. Yet, if you look close enough, there are still some reminders. Joel Ramirez and Seth Duran take in the sights while visiting from Texas. That includes remnants of a frightening night in Lafayette Park. Wow. Tire marks and oil show where a U-Haul box truck tried to crash through security barriers a block from the White House Monday night. I think it's like really crazy and really scary how something like that could happen now. I was standing uh, right about there. DC's Chris Saboy witnessed the crash. He recorded the incident on his cell phone. I thought maybe it was a, a drunk driver and just an accident or something crazy. United States Park Police and Secret Service believe 19 year old Say Varsheath Kandula of Missouri deliberately crashed the truck. This is where I go my run a lot of times at night, and you never even thought that a truck could have come out of nowhere like that. There's always something happening in D.C. England's Andrew Bates could not return to the club quarters hotel. It's one of several near the crash scene that evacuated as a precaution. You know, I'm used to being shouted at by police in London. It was a different experience having, having it happen over here. There's no denying this situation could have turned out a lot worse, which is why people we spoke to told us they're glad these barriers worked as designed. Thankfully, it didn't get any closer or anything or no people were harmed. Kandula faces several charges, including threatening to kill, kidnap or harm the president, vice president or a member of their families. He remains in custody in Lafayette Park. Dave Laval, DC News Now. Yeah, pretty scary there. Meanwhile, our partner station in Missouri is digging in the background of this teenager who police say rammed his Utah uh, into Lafayette Square. I'll bring you that all ahead at 730. Meanwhile, in Prince William County, police are looking for a man suspected of robbing a bank yesterday afternoon. Now, police say the man walked into the Bank of America branch on Donegan Drive in Manassas just before 3.30. He demanded money from a teller, then took off. Now, the man police are looking for is Jake Thomas Love. Police say he has a history of gun and drug violations, resisting arrest and robbery. Police say he is known to spend time in the Sudley Road area. Anyone with information is asked to contact police. And new tonight, a former D.C. police officer has been found guilty of committing civil rights violations in the year 2018. So a jury convicted 57-year-old Mark Lamont Clark for using a legal chokehold in two incidents that happened five days apart. Both of them happened at the same McDonald's restaurant. U.S. Attorney for D.C. said in both cases Clark used chokeholds after confrontations had happened. The victims were hurt in both the cases and in a statement today. MPD said that they supported the investigation, also reiterated the fact that the department bans chokeholds. And developing now at 7, the University of Maryland is investigating multiple hate bias incidents 
inside a residence hall. Now, two incidents involve racial slurs against a black community. In another incident, resident life staff found an anti-Semitic symbol. Now, the incidents happened between April 29th and May 2nd in La Plata Hall. The University of Maryland Police Department's Criminal Investigations Unit is now investigating. If you know anything, urge to contact campus police. You can also submit an anonymous tip on their website. All right, it has now been more than a month since 20-year-old Damian Myers went missing. And tonight, his family is starting to lose hope. Yeah, reporter Jan Marisa Say sat down with his family. They talked to her about how they're trying to stay positive during this difficult time. I'm trying to stay hopeful, but it's hard, you know. I'm trying to stay hopeful, but it's hard. And the hours go by and the days go by, you know, what the possibilities are and stuff like that. So all that goes through our heads. The family of Damien Myers has been trying to keep their heads up since Myers went missing on April 14th. We're trying to hold on the best as we can, but it's like, like we need answers. Myers told his grandfather he was going to get food with some friends at a silver diner in Waldorf. When he didn't come home, Richard Myers Sr. became worried. When the phone kept going straight to voicemail, and I, you know, I got to thinking then something is not right with it. First, filing a missing persons report. Now, Prince George's County Police have involved the homicide unit, leaving his family with so many mixed emotions. Rough, hard, tough, unbearable. It don't make me feel good. You know, it went from a missing person, now the homicide unit is involved. Yeah, it's not good. His father's message to every parent right now. I just love when your kids make sure that they're okay. Reporting in Waldorf, Maryland, I'm Yamar Say, DC News Now. Hi everyone, I'm Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb. It was a good day across the DMV. I hope you enjoyed sunshine, but really you had that kind of haze in the sky, right? We have that fire, a uh, wildfire danger that's still pretty heightened uh, with the smoke. Zero air quality concerns, so we're not concerned about that, but it is reducing all that bright sunshine uh, that we really want to see. You can see there is a good breeze out there. It's coming out of the east, and so that's going to stay intact, and it's really kind of solely across the district areas of loud in Fairfax County that we're noticing uh, the wind flow even for Washington County. The rest of the region, uh, we're fairly quiet out there and so uh, winds are not a huge issue, but uh, tomorrow afternoon as we are awaiting the arrival of this kind of cold front, it's going to allow wind gusts to kind of pick up. Right now at the 7 o'clock hour, we're sitting in the upper 60s to 70 degree mark. Uh, pretty seasonable air for this time of year. So as you're planning your evening, I have a good suggestion. Break out the barbecue, a nice walk, whatever you have planned. It's going to be a very tranquil, quiet evening. Partly cloudy conditions, so a few clouds that are going to stream across our region. Hey, we're under a very good dry stretch. We do have a weak cold front that is going to slice across our area uh, late tomorrow evening. It will drop our daytime highs, so let's discuss that coming up. Janessa, thank you. Developing now at 7, three Palestinian students have filed a federal civil rights complaint against George Washington University. Those students are alleging discrimination and mistreatment against them and other Palestinians at the school. And now the Department of Education's Office for Civil Rights has launched an investigation into the school. The complaint cited incidents of anti-Palestinian comments in classrooms and also inappropriate investigations by GW police. And they also say they were denied health services and falsely accused of crimes. Now we did reach out to the university for comment. They say in part the university is in receipt of a request for information from the U.S. Department of Education and will respond to the department's inquiry. You can learn more about this story on our website, dcnewsnow.com. Well, new tonight, a panel of federal appellate judges has ruled that a controversial admissions policy at one of the nation's top high schools based in Virginia can continue. In a split two to one ruling, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fourth District, uh, Fourth Circuit rather, says the policy at Thomas Jefferson High School in Fairfax County can stay. The coalition for TJ filed that lawsuit saying new admissions policies enacted in 2020 harm Asian American students. Now, since the policy was put into place, the student body includes more Hispanic and African American students and fewer Asian Americans, though they still make up more than half of all students. In the ruling, the judges wrote the coalition could not establish the school board adopted its race neutral policy with any discriminatory intent. Now, one of the plaintiffs has indicated she plans on bringing the case to the U.S. Supreme Court. 
All right, we are talking about holiday traffic and travel this Tuesday. And of course, Memorial Day weekend just a few days away. Yeah, we know that means tens of millions of Americans will be on the move. Mm -hmm. Our traffic anchor Shanika Grimshaw breaks down some early predictions for the travel weekend from AAA. The weekend is just about here for the best and worst times to travel. AAA expects Friday, May 26th to be the busiest day on the roads during the long Memorial Day weekend. The best times to travel by car are in the morning or evening after 6 p.m. The lightest traffic days will be Saturday and Sunday. Major metro areas like big cities, D.C., Boston, New York, Seattle and Tampa will likely see travel times double compared to normal. With lower gas prices and more travelers on the road this year. Drivers should expect long delays this holiday weekend, especially in and around major metro areas as commuters mix with Memorial Day travelers. So our advice is to avoid driving during peak hours or use alternative routes. Maryland Transportation Authority says the best times to travel across the Bay Bridge if you're heading up to Ocean City this weekend will be Thursday, May 25th before 10 a.m. and after 9 p.m. Friday, May 26th before 8 a.m. and after 9 p.m. Saturday, May 27th before 8 a.m. and after 4 p.m. Sunday, May 28th before 11 a.m. and after 5 p.m. Memorial Day Monday, May 29th before 8 a.m. and after 10 p.m. This is expected to be the third busiest Memorial Day weekend since 2000. For DC News Now, I'm Shanika Grimshaw.